Now we're looking at, at question number nine. And question number nine says, the simplified diagram below represents an electrolytic cell. Now there's a big difference between the, this one and the one that we just did. Represents an electrolytic cell used to electroplate. They used to electroplate copper iron, uh, copper coin with silver, right? So I just wanna elaborate a little bit quickly on what electroplating is. So what they do is they will take a piece of metal and then they will let it lose some ions and then they will cover a certain other uh, metal. Most of our cutlery and our jewelry, your car rims, and all this stuff is actually, actually goes through electroplating. So it actually is all part of electrochemistry, right? So I just wanna show you the difference between the two cells before we start answering so that you actually know how to identify them. So with this cell here, I can see that I have a battery and everything is in one beaker, right? So with the previous one that we did, I see that I've got a voltmeter here. That's why we were asked to calculate the voltmeter reading. We were also asked to give one function for X, which is our salt bridge. When we talk about a galvanic or a voltaic cell, we need a salt bridge for, which just like provides pathway for the ions and ensures electrical neutrality in the cell and so forth. We've also got two solutions. We've got two beakers in two different solutions. Whereas if you look at this question, everything is in one beaker and both the objects in questions, which will be your anode and your electrode will both be in one beaker and both will be in the same solution, right? Now in this case, I see that this is copper, is a copper electrode that I'm given. This is a copper coin and we need to coat this copper coin with silver, right? We call this electroplating, we call this electroplating of a copper coin with silver. Then again, you're gonna need the 4B and the 4A standard table where we're gonna be identifying what is my anode, what is my cathode, where is oxidation and where is reduction taking place, what is the reducing agent and what is the oxidizing agent. Remember again, I prefer using the 4B table. If your teacher has used, taught you another way to use it, then you can use whichever one. What I would do first, by just by looking at it, I would go to my table, highlight my silver and highlight my copper, and then I'll see which one is an anode and watch which one is a cathode. But then again, we're gonna do it together step by step. So let's see what the questions are that follow. So the first one says, I must define the term electrolysis. Remember what I said in the previous question. The examiner will always ask you for definitions. And guys, you cannot fail because you're lazy to read, right? So I would say go through all your definitions every single night if you have to. But definitions are things that you have to learn off by heart. The examiner wants to see that you can actually state precisely what electrolysis is. A definition is not, is not what you understand. You're also not explaining to the examiner what electrolysis is. You're trying to give the definition. So the definition for electrolysis, again, there are usually more than one definitions that we can give, but I'm gonna give you one. So define the term electrolysis. It is the chemical, the chemical process in which electrical energy, and we already saw that we have a battery or a cell there that needs to be present for it to actually work, but in which electrical energy is converted, is converted to chemical energy. To chemical energy, which actually makes sense. I actually wanna go back to the diagram. I see that I've got a cell there. It would have been a battery if I had more, more than two cells. But in case, in, with for argument's sake, this is then a cell. And I can see that I need this electrical energy to convert so that this process can take place, so that this silver ions can actually go whoa the way around and then co coat the copper coin, right? We need the battery. Whereas in the previous one, we were only measuring um, the value of the, of the cell of the E cell potential. So that's the difference of the chemical process in which electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. Again, please use full words and full English. You want the examiner to see that you know exactly what's going on. Number 9.2 says, which component in the diagram indicates that this is an electrolytic cell? Now remember, there's a difference between a galvanic and a, a voltaic cell and an electrolytic cell. The difference between the two is, this one is in one beaker, the other one is in two beakers. We have two solutions in the other one. Here we only have one. And then we have 
a, a cell there. We only had a voltmeter, we had two beakers and two different solutions. So one of the things that can actually show us which component which indicates that this is an electrolytic cell, it is the battery. It is the battery because without the battery, even though they are in two different solutions and this one is only in one solution, for this process to take place, we need the electrical energy from the cell to actually make the process go on. So we need the battery. And I can see that it was only for one mark again. Number 9.3 says we must write down the name or the formula of the electrolyte. Let's see, electrolyte is just a fancy way of saying solution and stuff, but we must write one word of the electrolyte that's, that's present. I can see that, aha, the electrolyte that will be present, it is silver. So that will then be silver nitrate. Electrolyte is a solution that we have in the beaker. So that will then be silver nitrate because I do have silver here. What happens, remember the silver needs to coat the copper coin. So it means that the silver will lose silver ions in solution and then they will then co uh, coat the coin. So that then means my electrolyte will be silver nitrate. Silver nitrate. Let's look at number 9.5. So this question says, I must write down the balance. This is very crucial, but balancing we learned in grade 10. We must write down the balanced equation of the half reaction that takes place at the silver electrode. Now, I just want to go back to the diagram that I'm given using your 4B or your 4A standard table. I know that the silver must coat the, coat the copper. So the silver will lose its electrons and fall into solution. So therefore, my balanced equation, remember I've got a silver, which is on a rod, it loses electrons to become Ag plus, and then it will have an E minus. Just to also elaborate on this, most of you guys confuse silver and gold. Think of it as ah, silver and ah, gold, right? So I see most of you guys actually confuse the two, but that's how I remember it. But this is then the balanced equation that you will have. We've got silver on the rod. It then falls into solution because it lost an electron. So this is the direction in which it will look. Make sure that the electron is in the correct side. And then that would have then been for, for two marks. And that is all for electrochemistry. This is how we, I would have then answered the questions for question number nine. The important thing is between question number nine and question number eight is to identify which one is a galvanic or voltaic cell and which one is an electrolytic cell. Also be very flexible on how to use your 4A and your 4B standard table.